Good morning, YouTubers. Hello. I hope you're well. I'm very well, thank you. I just felt the urge to record. Um, client is coming in about less than 20 minutes, but I quickly, I just had a thought and I quickly wanted to share um, with you. And I don't really know like how to start. Um, maybe it's about um, going for what you want and um, just kind of going with your inner voice. Anyway, let me tell you a story. Um, when my little one, my firstborn, was um, much younger, um, I made friends with uh, one of the most um, vibrant, vivacious, positive energies like I've ever met. And um, she um, and I became really close friends. We lived near each other. And typically, with like young moms, we shared our dreams, you know, the kind of thing where um, she had a little girl, I have a little boy, and we talk about when they're older, when they're getting married, and uh, what we'd wear, and things like that. And just, um, we laughed and laughed and laughed and supported each other. When my father passed away, she was there for me. Friend passed away, she was there for me. Anyway, um, uh, we had a similarity in that we were both brought up in Sierra Leone. And, but she was part um, Nigerian and part um, Sierra Leonean. And her mom uh, stayed with her. So it naturally transpired that she ended up looking after uh, my little one, her mom, while she went off to work. And it was perfect because her little one, little girl, uh, was about the same age. Uh, maybe mine was a year younger. And um, both of them would be partly at nursery, partly at home with mom uh, being looked after. It was a perfect, perfect relationship. Um, and I never really used to communicate with mom. I just used to speak to my friend and then my friend would translate in Yoruba to uh, mom because I could never understand her Creole and it was hard for me to communicate with her. And for years that worked, it was perfect. Um, and then they went to big school, they went to big school, so, um, and I was having another baby, and I was like, okay, perfect, um, she will just end up looking after my little baby in our part-time nursery and part-time at home, and then something terrible happened, and I lost my friend, and um, I, even now, I still have to get used to the fact that she's not here, and she was, she was young, and, and she left a four-year-old, um, who was um, obviously friends with um, my little one. And I, I cannot even describe to you the day I heard, and it was very sudden. Um, it was on, totally unexpected. She had called to check on me, like um, the, the weekend she had passed away. She called on like the Friday and, and yeah, like the Saturday she had gone. And I found out on the Monday. And the Monday I found out, I remember my husband calling me and saying, um, sit, make sure you're sitting down when I tell you the news. When he told me, I just couldn't believe it. And I don't know. He went to the house to check to see whether this was true. And of course it was. And I remember getting into my car and I don't know how I got there. And can you imagine seeing a mum who has lost their world? She doted over her mom and looked after her mom like, I mean, she was the perfect child. I remember thinking, I'm absolutely, I'm about to see somebody who has lost their child, um, who was doing great things. And, um, and of course, mom was a complete mess. I remember she collapsing in my arms, saying, your sister's gone. We've lost your sister. I didn't know how she would survive, mum. I just didn't know how she'd survive because her daughter was everything to her. So, um, obviously, uh, we had the, our farewells, the ceremonies, and there was a little girl who had, um, because she was a single mum, had lost her mum. But thank God she had a grandma. But, of course, after months went by and almost a year or something, mum couldn't cope. Mum couldn't cope. So the little one was, um, thankfully, there was an uncle who um, had three little girls and he took her on and they went to live far away in the US. And um, they, yeah, she, uh, 
great, has done great in the US with her new sisters. Um, she's got three big sisters. And meanwhile, here's Melissa trying to cope every day. There is not a day that goes by that I haven't thought, oh my God, she's not here. There's not a day, and you get would vouch for this. She says you talk about it all the time. It's like she's still here because of the, the way she affected my life and her energy. Um, and meanwhile, Melissa goes back to work in recruitment, and then um, eventually I make the move closer to home, and I'm working as a mentor in, a, in, in the local college, and um, mom can't cope, so she's sent um, to um, Nigeria and Sierra Leone, and she's there for a while. So she's separated from her granddaughter. Um, Melissa is festering this dream of working with hair and um, and kind of ignoring the calling. And then one day, clarity of vision, as I'm exercising, I exercise in the mornings um, for half an hour, and that's my time to just think and dream and strategize. And, but it's all real, what I'm doing. When I'm working out, it's all completely real. Um, and, I, and I sweat for like 15 minutes. And then the next 15 minutes is stretching and doing my cores. And while I was doing my cores, I heard the voice, do hair. And that was it. I was like, I, 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 I mean, you see the story where I talk about um, why, why I decided to become a natural hairstylist. This is a calling for me. I, I know it. Um, so, um, and then I tell you, get, this is it. I'm going, we're just going to do this. We're going to do this and just follow me and, 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 and it will be fine. And, um, then that day that I was, I had the voice about doing hair. Um, I didn't, was it the next day I went into work? Um, and, or it was around the same time I found out that I was going to be made redundant. And it was the weirdest feeling. Like I thought about doing hair, I planned to do it. And then. I was made redundant and then the hair thing became real. Now, I am very professional. So what I want is when I'm working with clients with their hair, I don't want to be interrupted. And um, it was hard for me when I, because I, I got fell pregnant again and it was hard to check on mom because mom had come back at a certain point to UK. And then I was checking on her, but not well enough. And then she went back um, to Sierra Leone and then came back. And um, this time I was able to check on her, but not, not as well as I would have lo loved to, because I had a, had a dream from my friend who had told me to look after her and um, her, look after mom and her daughter because she had had to go. She, she had to go. So um, this is always clear in my mind, this dream to look after mom. And I know little girl had already been looked after because she was with a family in America. And I knew she was fine because I'm talking to them. I know she's fine. But mom is still needs to heal because she's lost her daughter. And then I was made redundant. And then it, um, it just worked out that obviously I started doing the hair work. and was very successful at it. And I needed somebody to look after a bunch of kids because Aget and I have many kids between us. Perfect person was mum, who had already been looking after um, Aget's um, little babies because Aget's got twins. Um, and then um, it's worked out behind this door, she sits and mom, mama, looks after our babies. And um, as a result of that, and it's fair, like we pay her and we look after her and make sure she's all right. She's never on her own. The clients are here and she's behind that door looking after her. And she has just healed. She has just healed and I was never able to look after her when I was working full time but now I'm working more than full time I am thankful that I can look after mama who lost her daughter and who can call her daughter's name now before she can call her daughter's name and the best news ever is her little granddaughter who she hasn't seen for years is coming home for her summer holiday like there are no words I mean you can feel the emotion so out of a dream where we touch hair and we touch hair authentically, we touch hair with honesty and we, we make sure you, you walk out of this space. And I thank you, clients, because without my clients, our clients, there is no way we would have been able to afford to financially support mum, grandma, to the point where now she feels confident, she feels stronger, she's making earning a living and we're able to support her with that. So that's one of the most uh, successful stories of bespoke hairstyles, reuniting a grandmother 
and her daughter and her and, and her granddaughter. I just wanted to share that with you. Thanks for watching this post and we continue. We know we change, we know we change lives and our clients tell us and you know this space is a space where we talk in private and we support our clients. But it's just an example of the power of the mind. From a thought comes this mama reuniting with her granddaughter. Fantastic. We still miss you. Rihanna, we still miss you. I still miss you. I'm sure all your friends do. Rest in peace. Thanks for watching this posting, everyone. Take care. Bye.